the left downwind. Cessna over the threshold, coming up on the white dot, Adderby on the white dot, left turn first available. I got a high wind coming up on about a half mile final, clear to land, Adderby on. Traffic on the left face, you're following a Cessna down, low off your left. Square it up just a little bit, and then we're going to get you in. Start your descent, though. Start your descent on the base. Traffic on final, give me follow on base. Base traffic, start turning toward the numbers now. High wing coming up on quarter mile final, take it all the way down to the green. Cessna taxiing on the green, expedite down to the next hard surface. Get me some speed, there you go, 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 go fast. This is going to be good. I got traffic on a mile final. You're following traffic ahead and to your right. High wing coming up on the threshold. Take it all the way down to the green dot. Bob Charlie Sierra, two mile final. A mile final. Turn north. Turn north, and we're going to just make you. Uh, we're going to bring you back around. Jet traffic's coming up on about a mile and a half final runway. Nine are clear to land. Okay. All right. Let's 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 listen up, guys. If you're on final for runway nine, I want you to offset to the left. I got a jet that's landing on runway nine. The jet's cleared to land runway nine. If you can make it. If not. Just continue straight ahead. It looks like you're going around for the jet. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we had one right in front of us, sir. Dragger. Let's see. What we got? A tricycle. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tail dragger. Down to the green. Uh, green dot. Then a left turn. Short final here. You click land on nine. All the way to the white dot. Go down to the white dot. Find somebody to follow out here. Canard, just come to the runway, and I might have to just send you around. That'll be fine. And for the jet, you just want to stay in this pattern, or you want to go back out for an instrument approach? Stay in a pattern. Charlie here. All right, just stay with me here for a minute. And my tail dragger, and eh, let's see, over the numbers, go down to the green. Come on. And Canard's gonna have to go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. And my uh, high wing here over the runway, keep it airborne, keep it airborne. You do not descend, do not descend. You got a fast guy behind you, do not descend. My, okay, here you go. Keep it airborne, keep it airborne. As soon as the guy behind you gets uh, slowed down, I'm gonna put you down. So keep it airborne. The uh, one that just passed the white dot, make a left turn on the hard surface. All right, my uh, high wing tail dragger, you can put it down now. You can put it down now. And Charlie Sierra, let me get you about a mile off. Let's see, Charlie Sierra, I lost. There you are. Make a left hand turn. I'll try to resequence you here on the down ones. We'll see how it looks. Short final, you're clear to land runway nine on the white dot. Clear to land on the white dot. There you go. And the tricycle left on the hard surface and follow the flagman. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being part of the show. And let's see, just find somebody to follow out there, uh, follow on the final, and as you get close to the runway, if it's not going to work, we're going to send you around and then try to resequence you. Now, who else got sent around that's not back on the downwind? The Canard? Yeah, Canard. All right, Canard, there's a golf stream up there that went around, too. I just lost sight of him, but you're going to make kind of a left-hand turn and stay low. I think Charlie's here once we're out, dude. 3,200. Okay, that'll be fine. Just maintain BFR. I don't know what else is up there above you. Probably most everybody's down here. So just make a left-hand turn. We'll try to get, uh, try to get you back here. Uh, our got the uh, jet inside. Okay, the RV, maybe an RV-10, whatever, here on final. Keep your speed up and go all the way down to the... Uh, aim for the green dot for me. Uh, actually, keep your speed up. There's a guy behind you. Aim for the green dot. I'm sure that's plenty of room for you to land on runway 9. You're supposed to land on runway 9. Number two... You're going to go down to the white dot. Follow the white dot. Actually, you know what? That's 1,500 feet. You're going to land at the white dot. The uh, spacing looks adequate here. Two guys on final. You're kind of tight there. Keep each other in sight. And you're going to uh, aim for the white dot. If it's not going to work, we'll do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan B. We might have to send you around. The second guy behind you out there in about a two-mile final. Are you slow enough to be able to follow that guy in front of you? You need to go around. Well, I probably shouldn't ask that because I had about five guys to answer me. So I should know better than that after 35 years, you would think, right? All right, so uh, let me see. The guy who's number one, it's number one. What kind of airplane is he? An RV type. All right, RV type. Keep it airborne for me. Keep it airborne. And I got a fast guy behind you. The number two guy over the uh, uh, trees there. Go ahead and put it down on the numbers. Put it down on the numbers. My first guy just coming up on the numbers. At the, uh, over the grass at the numbers. I want you to keep T minus one minute and counting. Hello. everybody and thank you very much for joining us on this thursday night the weather outside is fantastic 
um, but it's much, much better in here, apparently. Um, so before I go any further, I have got a couple of big thanks to make. The first one is to Forflight. Forflight sponsor the live stream. Without Forflight, it wouldn't be possible. And uh, they've asked me to tell you about Forflight Sentry, which is an ADSB, a twin channel ADSB receiver that comes with built in carbon monoxide detector and a solid state AHAR. So thank you very much for Forflight. If you'd like to know more about this and if you'd like to do us a favor, go check it out on www.sentry.com. Sentry fly with that was it www.flywithcentry.com forward slash flyer www.flywithcentry.com forward slash flyer I got that one right I would also like to thank the team thank you very much team I've been out all day so I haven't been involved in pass in in preparing this live stream at all um, I've got some pictures I've got to press on some buttons I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing but thank you very much for taking up the slack of me not being around and and thank you. I'm sure it'll be just as slick as it normally is, um, but maybe a little bit <laughs> less slick because I don't really know what I'm doing tonight, more than usual. Um, what have we got for you tonight? Well, as usual, we've got a whole bunch of news. We've got Fancy's Hangout, and we've got Mark Jeffries, our guest tonight, who's sitting there. I'm looking at him in the green room. In fact, I'm looking at an empty chair in the green room at the moment. It's a little bit worried. No, no, he's coming back. There you go. There you go. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. There was... Mark, I think Mark just waved, but I don't. Mark, we don't wave with middle fingers, you know. <laughs> that's going to be a fun interview we've got uh, coming up for you. And we've also got some weather from Simon. Simon's not with us tonight, but he, he says he'll be back next week. I think he's uh, he had some other commitments, um, but he's obviously still recovering from his appendicitis. So if I haven't missed anything out, which I don't think I have, I'm now going to run Simon Keeling and the weather. Here we go. Well, good evening, everybody. Hopefully you are well. I'm enjoying some rest and recuperation here under blue skies. And it looks like for most of us, actually, we are going to be enjoying fair weather through this weekend. Plenty of flying opportunities to be found. Saturday, we've got high pressure in control. Um, you see it there dominating the weather across almost all of the country. Only northern Scotland may see a little bit of low cloud, but elsewhere it looks as if it is going to be fine. It's going to be dry. Bases of around four or 5,000 feet. Tops about 7,000 feet if there is any cloud with you. Um, just one thing to watch out, temperatures are going to be increasing. So wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see some moderate turbulence um, at quite low levels during the course of the afternoons. Mornings and evenings are better. Just a little bit bumpy, I think, Saturday afternoon. For Sunday, weak front just getting into northern Scotland. That brings more cloud. I think base is probably around 1,500 to 2,000 feet there. Tops about five to 6,000 feet. And I think just an odd spot of drizzle. But that's the exception to the rule. Most areas dry, fine, lots of sunshine around. A little bit of cumulus cloud perhaps developing over the high ground of northern England and Wales. Bases there, I think getting to around 4,000 feet. Tops could be at nine or 10,000 feet. A very low risk of an isolated shower, but for most of us, it's another glorious flying day. Again, looks a bit bumpy. I think uh, with those warm temperatures that we're going to be seeing, we could be seeing some moderate turbulence at times. So overall, it looks like being a fantastic weekend of flying. If you're coming along to weather school on Sunday, wow, you're in for a fascinating morning of weather. So uh, get ready for that. And I look forward to seeing you all there. OK, I'll leave you with that for now. Have a fantastic evening. Have a fantastic weekend. Keep the sun shining and bye for now. Thank you very That's much, Simon. Yeah, it's pulled through with a good forecast this week. Yeah. So we are, if I'm right, something like three minutes in and I've already realised... Uh, that I've made my first mistake, um, which is not mentioning, <laughs> which is which is not bad, not mentioning fantasy hangar. So to, in today's fantasy hangar, we're looking for stole aircraft for our hangar. So if you people out there want to choose your stole hangar and bring it to the comments, we'll um we'll well, tell you that ours is better generally. There's, no, there's not many stole hangers, but um, you might want a stole aeroplane for your hangar. <laughs> we're not doing stole hangers. <laughs> <laughs> no, stole aeroplane. It's it's been a lo it's been a long long day. I did um, <laughs> I, I I I did a CRI course because I thought it would be worth learning to, to some of the stuff that I probably should have learned properly when I did my PPL. And today was the assessment of competence, which was kind of with the weather and transport and everything else lasted all day. So big thanks to uh, John Cook, Cookie, and Alan Newton for that. But it was it was a it was a long day, and I'm I'm a little bit tired. And but I'll be on my sharpest behaviour for this. Let's move on to somebody else who can tell us about the news. So, Ed, I think I, you're up I, first. I am. I'll tell you about the news, but I will tell the viewers that you were assessed as competent. 
I know that was. <laughs> I could that could be the biggest mystery in aviation so far. That's like more of a mystery than Amelia Earhart. Uh, anyway, it's official. Ian is competent. <laughs> yeah, so, not sure about so, that. So uh, issue, issue news out last week. Obviously, the it's the the latest issue of Flyer. Um, uh, so we look at uh, UK uh, GA pilots' top ten airfields thanks to flight planning app Sky Demon, where they're running. They're using their data to look at airfields that get the most unique users. So check that out. Uh, plus read about getting a seaplane rating in Scotland, flying in Lithuania in an Auster Arrow, and flying a Piper Aztec on floats from Alaska to Florida. Plus, if you're a Fly Club member, don't forget, you save a whopping £64 with six free landings at Andrewsfield, Bagby, Elvington, Sherburn, Truro, and Yatesbury. That'll be for August. Absolutely. And if you want to know what the cover looks like, I could have shown you earlier, but I forgot, so I'm going to show you now. Okay. And the UK's top 10 favourite GA airfields are I'm yep. Mr. Sharp tonight. And it's it's free to read. I'll stick the link in the comments while someone Absolutely. does something else. Who's going to talk about Travis? Is that Dave? Yes, we've got you go. lots of views tonight, so we, we do need to switch through. Sorry? I think this, this is worth a clap, isn't it? It, it is mm. worth a clap. Here you go. Yeah. You can talk over the clock. Okay. So this is the news that Travis Ludlow has done it. He's now the youngest per per youngest person to fly around the world solo. He arrived back at the starting point, the official starting point, of Tuj Airport in the <laughs> I knew I should have practiced this more in the Netherlands on Monday. At the age of 18 years and 149 days, that beats the previous record by 14 days set by an American, Mason Andrews, in 2018, who was one of the first to congratulate him. Okay. No, no sour grapes. His record is, was, was there to be beaten. Very good. Well, well, well done, Travis. Travis. Yeah, yeah, good on him. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's fair to say, and, and Travis, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this, well done, congratulations. It's fair to say when we interviewed you, um, before you set off, you were, you came across as a an enthusiastic chap, but clearly you you were well at, at, at your young and tender age. You weren't massively experienced, and it was like bloody hell, he's taking on a lot. But you know, well done. You kept on trucking, did a whole load of stuff, and it, I, I think you know it's it's a great illustration of just what you can do in something as simple and basic as a Cessna one seven two. All load of people are, are very happy to go Pah! Cessna one seven two. That's a rubbish airplane, which we know it isn't clearly. Um, but you know, around the world quickly. Under, well, yeah, well done, well done, Travis. Top marks, top marks. So who's who's doing Giga, Johnny? It'd, it'd be me. You. Yeah. So this is the old Coventry Airport story. So the planning application to build this Giga factory um, on the airport has been submitted by the council and the uh, airport Coventry Airport Limited, and the factory will take up most of the main runway. Uh, and produce batteries for the likes of Jaguar Land Rover, who are based nearby. Um, and it's located there, or going, going to be located there, because it's adjacent to the UK Battery Industrialization Centre, uh, which is like a, a research centre right. for batteries. But <laughs> but but lots of the um, companies on the airport only found out about this through the media. They didn't find out about it through the um, airport themselves. No. And uh, who, guess who will judge the planning application that's been submitted by Coventry City Council? Is it, is it, is it generic? No, no, no. It's Coventry City Council. They're Coventry. the ones who will judge their own planning application. So they, they set their own homework, they submitted their own homework, and they're marking their own homework. Well, it should appeal to the CAA, if nobody else. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's perfectly normal these days, isn't it? That's what, that's what government and CAA do, isn't it? <laughs> on, on, on the basis that um, DFT want to make the UK best place in the world for GA, surely um, they're going to step in and go, no, you may not take an airport. Mm. Absolutely. I feel we Order. need one of these. You've been dying to push that. Uh -huh. We haven't had it for a while, have we? Best place in the world for general aviation. Let's yeah. make a giga factory on the runway. Yeah. Like, right. a, like I say, I'm still, I still like, though, in the artist's impression photos, you can still see the runway numbers and no X. So yeah, just know, to rub it in. That's it. Take your take your stall aeroplane. I'm turning up and landing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Ah. Yep. Moving on. 
Moving on. So, oh, I think this is you, Dave. It is, yes. This is uh, following on from Travis. Yes, it's another round the world pilot, or wants to be. This is Zara Rutherford, uh, who's aged 19. She's planning to fly, fly around the world in a microlite starting in August. The aircraft is this, which is a hell of a microlite, you have to say. Mm -hmm. It's the Shark, um, yeah, high performance two seat tandem microlite, retractable gear, variable pitch propeller, and a fairly luxurious cockpit, apparently. Cruise speed is 140 knots, range 1600 kilometers. And uh, so it's it's a great aeroplane to do it in, but of course it's VFR only. So um, gonna be some challenges there, uh, difficult thing to do. When you go to uh, Zara's website, which is called Fly Zolo, um, slightly disturbingly, the first thing you see on the homepage is a sign to saying, saying, follow my TikTok. I, I guess this is a reference to a loud wristwatch, is it? No, this, <laughs> yes. This, this is the modern day world, Dave. This is this is this is a this is a social media thing. It's it's like it? YouTube, but more more advanced, uh, and it's not it's I, not in sepia. <laughs> just, do you know what? I don't think Flyer has a TikTok account, do we? For a good reason. <laughs> is it, is it, isn't TikTok for the people singing and dancing and stuff? Yeah. 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 Dave. What? Do you fancy do you fancy running our TikTok account? Bit of singing, bit of Dave dancing. If if it, if anyone turns up tunes into the live stream next week and finds that only Ian is here running a TikTok <laughs> channel, you'll know what happened. <laughs> yeah. So when when's when's Zara Zara Straight Fly Zolo setting off, do you know? Is it August? Date at the moment? But uh, August, she says. Yeah. Is they mm. saying August. And the record is what the first micro light around the world. No. Yeah, and also, oh yes, it would be first youngest pilot, youngest pilot in a micro light. Yeah, youngest pilot in a micro light. Yeah. Didn't we have um, youngest had micro light around the world? Sorry. Will she be youngest female pilot as well? Probably. Quite probably. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Brian Milton fly around the world? I was going to say, yeah. didn't Brian Milton do that? Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't a female. He wasn't, and he wasn't particularly young either. <laughs> uh, oh, that'll be that'll be an inter that'll, that'll that'll fill our Travis slot, won't it? It will. It'll be yeah. great. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, to say um, that Zara comes from a, an aviation family, so yeah. it's not like she's just uh, just just learned to fly a microlight. Mm. You know, she's uh, got a thorough background in flying. Yeah. The, the, the clue is in her family name of Rutherford. Who must be getting ready for his Greenland Air Trophy thing at the moment? I would guess. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stall competition in Greenland, I think, yeah. amongst other things. Yeah. Good. Um, so, next bit of news. Um, if we if we if we finish with Zolo Zara, yeah. um, is is uh, Echelon Air, a new flying school at uh, Biggin Hill. Been there uh, not that long actually. Um, a flying school that has just been appointed as a Cirrus training center. Cirrus training centers are pretty rare things throughout Europe, not huge numbers of them, and this is a new one. So if you want to learn to fly a Cirrus or do some PPL training in some modern high-tech aircraft, brand new, head on down to Biggin and go to Echelon Air and speak to Philippe down there. he will tell you all about it. There you go. I remember I remember this photo shoot, Ed. It was a it particularly was, nice yeah, day. That was Florida a few years. That was like five or six years ago. Five or six years ago. It, 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 was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was tough, wasn't it? It was tough. It was, it, yeah, it was as bad as it looks in the photo. It was lovely. Yeah, absolutely. We dig deep yeah. for everybody here. Um, <laughs> okay, moving Stole. on. Yes. So I need to talk drag, stole drag. drag. So, um, so this is the news that stole drag racing um, is it's, it's taking off in the US after receiving national accreditation from the FAA. Um, it follows the 2019 debut of Stoll Drag at the Reno Air Races, uh, which became a, uh, the first new race class in almost 20 years there. Um, and this May, uh, Stoll Drag Events uh, LLC received an FAA accreditation, which allows them to take their events on the road. Um, so if you're wondering what Stoll Drag is and you've not come across it, then you should definitely hunt out some videos on YouTube. And I think we might have a video for you later. Uh, but it stands for short type of landing, and obviously drag is literally a drag race where it's um, where airplanes race side by side as fast as they can down a two thousand foot straight, land, turn around, and race back to um, cross the finish line. 
So um, it's 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 exciting stuff. It's really good, and it's mm. it's it's a good test of skill as well. So, and having a fast aeroplane doesn't necessarily it's yeah you have to work really hard. Um, mm. having, having, right having, having missed the um, the run through earlier, and I know it's difficult for people out there to believe that we actually have a run through. Um, <laughs> There's a. I, I spotted in the in, in the assets we have a Stoll Drag Race video. When when are we scheduled to be watching that later? We'll watch yeah. it during, just before Fancy Hanger. Okie dokie. Let me yeah. move back upwards. What's our next news story after? <laughs> oh, it's free money. It's free Johnny. money. Yes. So you can get some free money. Seven hundred and fifty pounds to be precise. Um, the Vintage Aircraft Club. I've got a tail dragger conversion course, which you can, um, it's an annual award. It's the Liz Inwood tail dragger scholarship. Um, this is for pilots who are 35 years old or younger and want to fly a vintage tail dragger. So you need to hold a PPL or an MPPL or a Lapple and have a hundred hours total time of which 50 needs to be P1. And you need to get your application in before the 8th of August. So go to the VAC website you can download an application form and fill it in um, and it will include the money will include aircraft hire and instructor costs. Uh, it doesn't include travel or accommodation or anything like that. So if it's something you want to do, get on there yeah. and get, get applying. Yes. How old do you have to be? 35 or under. Yep. Great. 750 pounds of free money. Free money. <laughs> go for it, people. If you want to That's go there and buy a vintage tail dragger, go for it. Yeah. Um, okay, and we've got Dave next, talking about faster racing than stall drag, I think. Yes, a bit of age discrimination there. I don't qualify for that. Anyway, <laughs> this story really? is about uh, uh, the Air Race 1. Air Race 1 is um, mm. it's where they race side by side around a circuit. And they, you know, since COVID struck, they haven't had any of them. Uh, so the first one since then, uh, since COVID, is to be held in Texas, USA, at the end of October, a place called San Angel Angelo, which, if um, you read the description of San Angelo, it sounds fantastic. I've never been there, but it's, look, it's found, sounds great. 31st, 30th and 31st of October, so it's a full weekend. And you have to admire the guy who runs Air Race 1, Jeff Saltman. He's Mr. Persistent, along with Peter Day, when it comes to getting this air racing going. Um, he just keeps, keeps going and organising it. Um, so anyway, that's, that's coming up end of end of October. Excellent, right? Mm. We're almost getting to the end of news. There's two more stories to go before Mark Jeffries is coming up. Um, so Mark, get yourself warmed up in the in the green room there. Thank you very much for that wave. <laughs> and uh, so, what other story? Uh, art competition. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a, you know, we are we are we refined audience here. So this is the LAA art competition. So um, get your crayons ready. Um, and so we're going to issue a special challenge at the end of this to our own audience. Um, but the LAA, uh, so that's the Light Aircraft Association and the Guild of Aviation Artists are holding the UK's fifth, uh, fifth annual art contest for six to 17 year old people. Uh, there's three age categories, six to nine, 10 to 13 and 14 to 17. Uh, and prizes include art equipment and an opportunity to meet aviation artists in london so the theme is design your perfect aircraft uh, and it's hoped that youngsters will be inspired uh, by behind the scenes work of, of the aviation industry specialists and a, a brief ask them to consider what's their perfect airplane what would power it through the sky would it be big or small and what special features might it have so and prize winners will be selected to um uh and entered for the international art competition run by the federation aeronautique internationale so wow. enter, enter that by the 31st of January, 2022. Or if you're older, um, then enter the flyer art competition. So we challenge you flyer artists um, to bring, uh, to send us your art pictures, uh, which we will showcase next week. If you remember Take Heart, which Tony Hart, God rest his, his, his soul, you know, used to front on the telly. It's probably a bit of an old telly reference for Johnny. Um, but um, I'm sure we can come up with some cheesy music, and we'll 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 run through pictures. We're gonna we're gonna challenge ourselves to come up with our own art. But um, there we go. So yeah, we want your art for next week. So there's going to be four entrants from us four to start with. <laughs> yeah, um, can't guess the art. Yeah. 
can't just be us. So come on, people, get drawing, get those crayons out. <clears throat> Actually, funny enough, today um, I landed when I landed back at the strip. There was a I saw a chap walking along the strip, walking his dog, um, coming over for a chat. And I, as he got closer, I recognised him. And it was um, if, you, if you ever watched, if you ever read Balper magazine, the old Balper magazine, uh, it was John Reed who used to do all the cartoons. Figment. Ah. Right. So he was so, actually that's it. I just need to. Oh, why didn't I think? Why did I open my mouth? I could have just asked him to draw something and sign it as me, couldn't I? <laughs> you could, but I think we would have rumbled you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're trying to say I can't draw or something. <laughs> Certainly not. Okay. Excellent. Well, there you go. So get your drawings in for the next week. Get those crayons out. Something to do in those cold winter evenings that aren't coming this week at all. Um, I've got a thing here that says DC Speeder. Yeah, I can't see an appropriate picture. DC Speeder, what's that all about? I've got well, it. Don't worry. Look away, Ed. Look away, Ed, because this looks like a giant spider dangling from a web. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's actually the Jetpack Aviation Speeder prototype, uh, which is powered by four jet engines with swivel to give it, uh, vertical takeoff and landing and forward directions. You can see the engines there pointing downwards. So this is the first flying prototype, which has been undergoing tethered tests to test the controls. That sounds like a good thing to do. The production versions will have eight engines with a top speed of 150 mile an hour plus. And if you want to, you can place an order now, a mere $380,000. Have, um, have we got a photo of the actual, the real one that they're intending to sell? Well, it's only a mock-up at the moment. So we, I don't think we've uploaded one of those, but if you go to the okay. website, there's a mock-up no. there. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to, I'll, I'll find one and we'll share it somewhere. But generally, you... gen, genuinely, this is, <laughs> I, I often say to the team that, that you know, we, there are people coming up with new and unique ways and expensive ways to kill oneself. But this is, there we go. Look there at this. <laughs> I guess it's, it's, it's only one, it's, it's almost like a coffin with a windscreen. <laughs> Saves a bit of time then, doesn't it? But, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> just... Jetpack, I want to say Jetpack is better known for, David Maiman, you remember, with his stunts and the jet backpack? Yeah. And apparently the jet backpack, the JB-10, apparently yeah. has FAA approval now. Exactly what it's approved for isn't clear, but it's got FAA approval. For, for, wow. for, yeah. for slicing and dicing vegetables, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing. There you go. Well, I have to say, everybody, that is the end of the news for today. And coming up is the bit that you've been waiting for. So let's see if we can manage this slickly, as it were, with the flyer stinger going into the Mark Jeffries. Hello. Good evening, Mark. How are you? Hello, Johnny. Great. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, for the probably one person who's watching who doesn't know who you are, um, just, just tell us a bit about yourself and, and how you got into flying. Um, air Cadets, mod, mod, model aeroplanes, Air Cadets, uh, PPL training at 21 and um, 41 years flying now. Fantastic. Now, the discipline of aerobatics is obviously attracted you um how, how did that come about and just talk us through some of your achievements uh aerobatics came about by um perhaps not enough money to go anywhere because uh, as a farm worker at 21 years old i didn't have much money so um people would uh, give me uh, money for 10 gallons of petrol in those days so i'd spend five gallons on a joyride and five gallons myself and um Turn the airplane upside down and uh, sort of teach myself a little bit uh, that way. Uh, but I suppose um, my aerobatic experience really started during the PPL. Um, I ran about 12, 15 hours. It came up on the course that you had to do spinning. And um, people went over, I remember vividly, went over Stoughton and um, did some spinning. And I think the following week's lesson was um, out of born. It was okay. Um, just uh, go and fly the local area for half an hour. <clears throat> so took off on the local area, just um, five miles away, uh, climbed up to several thousand feet and did some spinning. Mm -hmm. um, much to the uh, amazement of my instructor and Lindsay Brown, who were on the ground, went and asked, uh, 
where did you go? I said, well, I just went over there and did some spinning. <laughs> and they, they were quite shocked. <laughs> uh, so I suppose when I discovered aerobatics. Brilliant. And it, it's grown into an international sort of, not pastime, but job for you really, hasn't it? You've been around the world with it. Yes, yeah. So um, aerobatics, air shows, uh, go hand, uh, competition and air shows hand in hand. So you need um, some experience for competition. You earn, you need to earn some money. So you fly an air show and you go and fly a competition and you improve on your uh, on your performance and uh, climb the competition ladder. And then um, where I reached uh, eighth in the World Aerobatic Championships. Best flight was sixth in the world in 2007. And um, then, as you've mentioned, go around the world. So uh, use that experience and um, fly international air shows. Yeah. And you've done some quite interesting things in terms of formations with other aircraft, haven't you? What, what's the what's the, the your highlight? What's the biggest aircraft? Oh, the highlight was most definitely um, uh, flying formation with the DHL 767 in uh, Bahrain uh, some years ago. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That was absolutely superb, quite an experience. There's a lot of talk previously about, you know, mind the weight turbulence and all that sort of stuff, but it's difficult to form eight upon because there is so much of it. Um, mm. So, as you can see, we're some distance off the wingtips, uh, not this normal formation that we fly, uh, where our wingtips are a metre apart. Um, here we've got, looking, like, looking at that picture, around about eight metres, just because of the scale of the aeroplane. I didn't know where to look. One thing it did have on its wingtip was a massive strobe light, which was hugely blinding um, in daylight. But you know, this big aeroplane, leading edge down, flaps down. And, uh, mm. You have to intercept it because there's no, oh, let's just go around again. I'm not quite there or anything like that. So you have to intercept this aircraft doing 150 knots, mm. head to head, and then sort of turn at the right time and just latch onto its wing. Wow. So five miles out of a fly past at the air show. Yeah. Um, uh, did you get any, any chance to practice that because from your point of view practicing is a daily occurrence but with a 767 you can't just quickly jump jump in and go can you uh, the the first take was the take uh, so right. <laughs> a, a lot of experience can you know you, we can all intercept certain aircraft in formation mm. um, it's just uh, you know just approach the airplane slightly higher so you've got a bit more energy uh, admittedly, we approached at um, head to head, almost, or just slightly to the side, and uh, just sort of sharp 180 and just feel on down onto it and join it on the wing. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, and you, you've also done a lot of ferry flying in your time, haven't you? Can you just talk through a bit of that? How, how, how many miles have you covered across the world? Well, uh, my first ferry flight was from. Romania to the UK and uh, got detained for um, suspected uranium smuggling or something like that because it was the first time uh, East, an aeroplane had sort of really flown out of the Eastern Bloc, certainly out of mm. Romania I think, to the UK. But then uh, in 90, that was 92, uh, was it 92 or 91? No, 91, I think that was. Um, Might have been early 92. Um, 92 uh, ferrying yaks from Lithuania, and I've flown that route uh, 140 times. Uh, it's mm. 990 nautical miles thereabouts, um, going the short water route. So, you know, I've done 140,000 miles across Europe. Uh, wow. Five times around the world, Travis. Equivalent. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> trip, it was absolutely astounding uh, for, a, for a young man like that. I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah, uh, have you got any, uh, you know, amazing sights you've seen, or any any hairy moments you can talk about? Um, we see lots of uh, interesting things when you're flying. Uh, for example, just the other day, I came, I was flying across Poland. I had to get 18 to take two Lithuania, and uh, in the middle of a forest next to a lake, there's a massive castle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who put that there? Why? Um, you know. 
you see uh, castles perched on pinnacles of rock in, in the Alps, and, uh, wildlife, you know, deer, storks, um, uh, water birds. I've seen a flock of water birds, just a big round floating mass, a ball of some sort of black seabird. Hmm. This was in the, um, in the Baltic Sea. Oh, another interesting thing was um, a forest. I'm looking in the distance, and in the distance, there's a, absolutely a purple, oh, sorry, it's not purple, a um, orange haze of what looked like fog. That can't be foggy, you know, it's quite a sunny midsummer's day. But this haze was just the pollen from the trees, and one particular block of forest was spewing out all this pollen. Next block wasn't, and the one behind wasn't. It just oh, wow. that block was. Um, What's this? Have, have you seen a few <laughs> wind turbines looking upwards? Certainly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there. <laughs> yeah, coming back from um, um, this was in the laser. I think it was coming back from a world competition. I was <laughs> following a road in Germany. And, yeah. <laughs> turbines spinning away you know the blades coming out of the cloud and vanishing again oops <laughs> <laughs> oh well so if you if you've done all this ferry flying across europe um, th there must have been some some sort of sketchy situations so should we say have you have you had any anything you know fuel related or weather related um, I've experienced all sorts of weather. Um, on one flight, I think I experienced everything you could get. Um, some snow, wet snow, which was sticking to the shutters on the front of the yacht, you know, the cooling mm. gills, and suddenly you've got no air going into the engine. Uh, icing, uh, sort of <clears throat> uh, ice uh, fog, freezing fog onto the wings, fog. And um, also very interesting in the cockpit, I've got lots and lots of little sparkles, all refracted. So you all these little red and yellow sparkles in the top of the, uh, of the ice. And on that same flight, I got um, struck by lightning. Wow. Uh, the, myself, the, the boom microphone, the spark jumped from the boom to my lips. Shit. That's all about. So I grabbed hold of the airframe. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, what, what's been your longest flight then? Have you, have you managed to do Romania to the UK non-stop in a yak? I don't know if you can do that with uh, ferry uh, tanks or... Longest flight is, um, is Republic Airport, New York to um, to um, 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 uh, what else we, um, Denham. Uh, ah. uh, so... Um, Safest aeroplane to fly the Atlantic in is a Cirrus. You can carry a boat with you and all your rations. And um, one of the last stops we did was to uh, to buy um, a flare pistol just in case we're on the ice and we could shoot mm. and scare a polar bear away. Um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that was a long flight. Good fun. Yeah. Is there anywhere you'd like to? Yeah, anywhere you'd like to visit again that you've been? Um, Iceland, yeah, I'd like to go to Iceland again because that is uh, magical. Um, the valleys are so different there, the glacial valleys instead of yeah. a, a, a v, v shaped valley that uh, most people are familiar with, where the river runs through it, it was caused the, the V shape. Glacial valleys are in a U shape yeah. and they're quite deep. I mean, uh, 3,000 feet is uh, not uncommon, and of course, you've got the volcanoes there, so. Um, and ski resorts, and um, I'd like to do a bit of paramotoring there as well. Nice, take it nice and steady. Mm. Yeah, so talk to us about how you got into. Oh, there's a quick question here. You've flown lots of aircraft. What's been your favorite? Uh, the favorite aeroplane some time ago, I would have said the Pitts S1 because okay. uh, very predictable. But now I'm going to say the extra 330 SC because it's very highly maneuverable, absolutely viceless. Um, you just point it and fly. It's got power. You can spin, and if uh, you can fly out of the spin fully stalled, um, stick hard back against the stop, just dab of opposite rudder, balance it on the rudder, and it will fly away um, with minimal height loss. You can actually, in, in the full stall situation, keep the stick back, and 
bring it right round into a micro loop. Wow. It's that controllable, control surfaces. It. So yeah. you can fly and find, almost find a new maneuver every time you fly now, which is what I'm doing. I'm trying to, uh, you've got to stay ahead of the game. <clears throat> if you fly the same maneuvers all the time, you get stale. So keep mm. looking, exploring and inventing. Yeah, and on, on the subject of exploring, as you were just saying about paramotoring, how did you get into that? Uh, well, I was skiing. So... <laughs> In the mountains in France, and um, you know, nice blue skies in that, and you see these things just drifting around. I think oh, I could do that. So went back in the summer, learned to uh, learned to paraglide, and then um, Cambridge here is a little bit flat, so um, no no hills to launch yourself from to put a motor on your back and. Uh, uh, Push yourself, push yourself off the ground. Yeah, yeah. And you're now flying, or at least uh, have something to do with the um, electric paramotors, which we spoke about in news uh, a week or two ago. Right. Just talk us through how those work. And we've got some video we can show people. Um, well, uh, you, you've got uh, uh, traditional uh, Tesla batteries, uh, same battery made by Panasonic, right. and. Um, 25 amp hour battery will last you around about 20 to 25 minutes. I've got access to two of them, a single battery or a double battery one. And uh, the, the idea and the concept, because in um, Switzerland, where these are manufactured, designed and manufactured, you can't have a conventional piston engine um, mm -hmm. paramotor, but you can have electric paramotor. But in Switzerland, you've got hills, so you say, oh, well, you don't need it. But mm. you launch on the paramotor, and you can use electric one. You can use it to go from thermal to thermal. If you've run out of thermals, just motor yourself um, along to um, an area. Is somebody <laughs> having a joke with me there? It could <laughs> well, it was. No, it wasn't. Not tonight, but I have had Monk Jack in my garden. <laughs> a job. <laughs> <laughs> clowning me around there. It's a propeller behind me, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, so, um, um, we'll, in fact, we'll, we'll quickly just show uh, some video of you taking off in one of, I think it's the Sky Jam, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right, I'll just play this. So yeah, the noise footprint's definitely definitely different because I can imagine as soon as you turn away, you, the sound of the prop will go, and there's no there's no exhaust spluttering. No, it's around about 150 meters to a ground observer. It's almost silent, hmm. almost silent. Um, that that obviously was on the full power uh, hmm. the takeoff, but once you're in cruise, it's um, very. Uh, very quiet on the ground. Well, yeah. So what does it cost? It is uh, around about 10,000 euros. That includes the emergency parachute, the harness, the motor, the battery. Um, it's a titanium frame. Um, 10,000 euros gets you fine. Right. And then with that sort of 25 minute battery time, what sort of altitude gain could you conceivably get? Um, one with two batteries, I, I did a specific test on, and I went to three and a half thousand feet. Right. And, uh, the reason I was testing it was I wanted to be the first person to fly an electric paramotor over the top of Mont Blanc, um, which is 12,000 feet, mm. uh, uh, 15,000. So um, I've got to use the thermals, use the power, use the, the wind. Um, and uh, try and get myself over the top of Mont Blanc on one. Yeah, fantastic. Um, um, now, going back to the... Sorry, sorry you on. Arrow gliding wing for mm. uh, better endurance because they uh, have more lift, uh, less drag. Right. right. Um, going back to the aero side of things and the global stars, you guys are very well known for using pyrotechnics and, and sky writing and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. 
other than air shows, you do some interesting events. Can you talk us through those? Uh, well, I recently started doing uh, gender reveals. Uh, so um, combining an air display with um, uh, part of my wedding display and then uh, reveal, gender reveal, and uh, it's proving quite popular. Uh, very expensive on the pyros. So it's using about £192 worth of pyros for firing, right. um, which uh, lasts 50 to 60 seconds. Wow. Uh, what, what, what's your normal routine then for, for the, the moment you press the button? How do you set yourself up? Well, you've got to rev the crowd up with a few unlimited aerobatics first. And woo, woo the crowds, get them, get them whooping and hollering. And yeah. so, um, there's, a, there's a heart I did at the show, yeah. So then, um, yeah, some unlimited arrows, draw a heart, and then uh, I pierce the heart with the colour. Uh, come, come towards uh, the, the crowd and then uh, fire up the, uh, the colour. Fantastic. So you do... I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. Presumably, you do everything from birthdays to funerals. <laughs> yes, uh, from conception to cremation. <laughs> That's a good, <laughs> a, a good strap line. Um, just before we finish, I'll play just for anybody who hasn't seen it a quick clip of some of the pyros. This was in uh, Hyderabad, in India, in March 2020. Right. Uh, we had three of us there. These are homemade Indian pyros. They uh, took, um, they just couldn't organize the import of the ones we use. So uh, a guy mixed these up uh, a couple of weeks before the event. And as you can see, they were very good. In <laughs> fact, they're better than the UK ones uh, because uh, the spark's much longer and brighter and denser. Brilliant. So you're going to start importing those? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm... <laughs> oh, dear. Potassium for manganators in there and all sorts of stuff. Fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's been good talking to you. And um, I quite, I've, I've never seen a twilight or nighttime display. So I think I need to sort myself out and come and watch one of yours. Yeah. This uh, coming Saturday um, at... Um, Abbots Ripton, uh, what, what will the time be? About um, 9.45, uh, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've butted in because I've got a couple of questions here before you run away. The, the, you up the, end. <laughs> the electric paramotor stuff, how, how difficult is it to, or electrical piston, how difficult is it to learn to fly a paramotor? Around about uh, four to six hours of ground handling will the training will see you flying and uh, at a minimum cost uh, you can buy all the equipment for around about three thousand pounds second hand pre-enjoyed mm. make sure it's safe have it checked out um so it's a paramotoring is a cheap way of introducing people to aviation and um you'll find a lot of people ppls do actually or have actually flown paramotors in the past okay. i've gone away. i've yeah, gone People say, why do you fly paramotors when you've got an extra and fly this and the other? I was going to ask that question. I don't know how far you are from. How far, are, you, are you living at Little Granston? Or are you... Yes, like a, um, 120 metres, I'm on the runway. Okay, so if, if, if you're wandering out, do you ever wander out of an evening and go, oh, what should I do today? Should I get the paramotor out or should I jump in the extra? No, 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 always in the evening, paramotor. When it's calm, sun setting, um, you know go and see the wildlife but it's amazing the deer the hares all sorts of um, birds in fact the red kites they're good fun they fly at exactly the same speed 22 miles an hour huh. if you can follow that i must put a gopro on my helmet and film one yeah, yeah so, um some of the pictures i've seen from the french alps uh, are a little bit scary because there appears to be like about 300 paramotors in one cubic meter Yes, it can be pretty dense, and yeah, occasionally they do bump into each other, but that's why you have a reserve. And have you ever used your reserve? No. <laughs> I went on one of these special courses where you could um, use your reserve if you wanted to, but I chose not to, because everything would get wet. So you do it yeah. over a lake. 
Right. Yeah. So how high do you fly then? Um, I got a thermal over the farm here um, a few weeks ago. It went up to three and a half, uh, 3,650 feet just on a thermal. On, with a motor on my back and everything. It just certainly picked up the thermal. The heat was rising off the buildings of, of the airfield and um, just drifted up. I was up with the gliders from Branston Lodge. But, but gen generally, you won't be up at three and a half thousand feet, though, will you? No, typically, um, paramotorists will fly at just around, just over 500 feet. Wait. Just at the legal 500 feet. <laughs> yes, exactly. have, you got, have you got your fingers crossed when you heard that? <laughs> and, and, uh, on a serious question, at 500 feet, can you still make use of the emergency parachute, or is it is it just too low? I think you would be able to if you bumped into somebody. But why would you want to bump into somebody? Well, I wouldn't personally. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, with paramotoring, is uh, very safe in terms of the um, your canopy is not going to deflate itself. You fly, fly in the evenings and early mornings when there are no thermals on the paramotor, generally speaking, um, so that the turbulence doesn't collapse the canopy. When you're flying in the mountains, yes, you, you get a lot of turbulence and thermals, and that's where the guys really do need a reserve chute. But on the paramotor, no. So, after uh, having... You say, does it, uh, would it be too low? No, it wouldn't be too low. If they you throw it and it will inflate instantly because we're throwing a drogue chute which opens the canopy and so on. So I think you'd be open in 150 feet. Well, let's hope that you never have to find out. Exactly. Mm. That's the way yeah. it is. So, so you you were, you were talking earlier about your favourite ex your favourite aeroplane being the extra 330. Yes. Um, but I mean, did, didn't you fly a whole bunch of Yak 11s and stuff like that? Yes, I've flown from paramotors to L29 jets. 45 hours in L29, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. left in between and um, about 100 on that, I guess. Okay. And then you stop those as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it was still, still the extra that's still the extra that nails it for you then. Yeah, it's total freedom because it's part of you because um, you can look and point and go wherever you want. You've got a couple of thousand feet a minute climb. Uh, it's so you don't have to think about flying it's instinct um, it's, it's probably very, instinct very, probably not instinct for everyone to be fair no. <laughs> well maybe not but <laughs> it's instinctive you don't have to think about flying it let me your extra 330 sc and i'll tell you if it was instinctive or scary <laughs> <laughs> or, or broken are you a zebra to get in it Wait, what your extra i think i could get in your extra I'm not sure yet. But not sure about your paramotor. Well, you have to prove yourself on the paramotor first. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. Pro I think it's safe to say that's probably not going to happen. You don't need to worry about your extra. Um, <laughs> sorry, right? Okay, I'm. I'm going to butt out there, Johnny. So, so I just. No, need no, to no worries. It, 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 it is. I think it is just about time for us to go into the old fantasy hangar and chat about this week's. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Cheers, Mark. Thanks. Thank you, team. Bye -bye. Wow. Some there good tales there. Mm -hmm. Mark, Mark, Mark is someone that we need to sit down and have a beer with because I suspect there might be some other stories that <laughs> you might not want fully recorded. Probably not involving him, but probably just ones that he's heard of other people, I'm sure. Yes, because um, yeah. I, th I think and and Mark, Mark is probably the biggest CA supporter I know, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, anyway, fantasy hangar. Yeah, yeah I have to say I like that electric paramotor as well. That's very cool. I do as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a bit scared of wrecking my legs. <laughs> I suppose. I mean, on that on that video, can we play that video again? It was only short, but I. Mark yeah. does have a little bit of a run. Let's just have a quick look at that.
Yeah. There's a bit that of a, that, that bit is of a running style there, isn't there? Yeah, I think you have to do that regardless. Mm. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> so I, I think we should all go to Little Grandstone and, and without Paramount just see if we can emulate an, the Mark run, the, all of the team just advancing <laughs> as one. <laughs> Take a video yeah, of it. See, see that, that'll, be, that'll be the first thing on our TikTok channel, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Ed, you've nailed it. TikTok but channel. Right. Yes, before we get into any more trouble. So, Fancy Hanger, um, obviously hot on the news about Stoll Drag Racing being nationally accredited by the FAA. We thought if we were going to have something Stoll in our Fancy Hanger, what would it be? So, who's well, first? Dave is first. Dave is right. first. I thought you were going to play a little video, Johnny, but um, uh, oh, well, yeah, we can we can show people a quick thirty seconds of if if they haven't seen it, what Stoll Drag Racing is. Um, the concept yeah. is that is basically off the line, accelerate, reach a certain point, chop the throttle, land, turn around, and go back again. So here's a quick quick video. So what isn't shown on that video is the bit where they, they land, have to stop quickly, turn, turn around. around. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So stopping to... quickly in a tail dragger, as we know, yeah. is, it can be a bit fraught you know, <laughs> because, um, well, you can just tip it over. So mm. the obvious thing to do for a stall aircraft is to have something that appears to be a tail dragger, but in fact is not. So I've gone for the Cub Crafters NX Cub, which has got a nose wheel. It's also got a 215 horsepower uh, CC 393i Lycoming engine and a three blade constant speed prop. This thing can fly 160 miles an hour in level flight. It can climb at 1500 feet per minute. And with me on board and a quarter tank of fuel, it just weighs 1500 pounds. So this thing is gonna go offline like a rocket. It's not gonna have a great deal of momentum at the end. So you can, you, know, you can land quickly and you can stamp on the brakes. <laughs> so I've won. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I can't, Steve. I can't believe we spent 27 years building up the brand of flyer, and all of a sudden you're suggesting a nose wheel cub in a stall competition. <laughs> if that, if, I, if that, I, have, like, I, I have to say, I do like, I, I, I do like that NX cub, but you know, for the brave decision that it was, um, what? they're selling, they're selling like hotcakes, but yeah, are they? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Second is for wimps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think if you turned up to yeah, I think if you turned up to stall drag with the NX Cub, as nice as it as it is, there might be some people pointing and laughing in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> only, only way you could only way you could ever fly the aeroplane was if it was taking place at night and no one could see you. <laughs> I mean, seriously, is there is a part I mean that 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 aeroplane gives the nose wheel more run for its money in the ugly stakes, doesn't it? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But it's very functional. Yeah. Very functional. It does the job really yeah. well. Yeah. And nappy is very functional as well. <laughs> but... Not a big fan, <laughs> I said, Ian. <laughs> right. who's, who's next? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think hey, it's you, Ed. You're next. Am I next? Okay. You are. So, so I picked... Um, this was this was a. I don't, there's lots of other things that I remembered, and a few people have picked them. Um, but I went for Draco, which was the amazing conversion of a Wilga 2000 by um, the uh, modern day Leonardo da Vinci, that is Mike Patey. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he took the 300 horsepower Lycoming IO 540 out and decided that more power was required. And because he has these things sat around, uh, added a 680 horse. Uh, shaft horsepower uh, PT6, uh, which turned a 102-inch uh, diameter prop. Um, big airframe mods included 
uh, mega undercarriage upgrades. Uh, he added 35 square feet more to the wing area by expanding span and cord. And Mike being Mike, he also added multi-screen Garmin panel with reversing camera and lights from a Boeing 737. Um, <laughs> this thing was completely bonkers. I say was, unfortunately, it was written off in a crosswind accident. Uh, Mike is rebuilding it, though. But at £2,500, uh, which is more than twice the weight of a carbon cub, uh, Draco takes off in 97 feet, lands in 110 feet, stalls at 36 miles an hour, and rate of climb is 4,000 feet per minute. And it is utterly bonkers. Ian and I watched it at the 2018 uh, Oshkosh st um, Twilight Stall Contest. And it sits there on the brakes. He dials in the power, and the thing absolutely hunkers down. And when you release the brakes, this thing almost, it just it kind of bounds into the air and then goes off, and it's just, it's, almost utterly terrifying watching this thing climb out just hung on the prop it is just amazing so um and mike is obviously following that in only in the way only mike can with uh with scrappy which is a yeah. very modified carbon mm. cup which is Wait, completely wrong. Uh, yeah and that's like homing io 780 um and a, a wing with slats sl a slats on slats and flaps I, yeah, they, these are not the real wings. Um, these, these are something our Photoshop expert knocked up earlier to make it look like a real aeroplane. That's my um, that's my art competition submission. Ah, okay, <laughs> Johnny, age nine. <laughs> but yeah, so um, so but Mike is rebuilding uh, Draco. There will be a Draco X. So goodness knows, I'm guessing you can just get a bigger Pratt and Whitney turbine. Mm. Um, but um, yeah. Quite amazing. So, Johnny. Yeah, so that. Ed, Ed had everything on that airplane. I've gone for an airplane with absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's called the it's called the Nap Little Cub, and it's a basically um yeah this a cub with all sorts of bits removed. Uh, but the amazing thing is, I mean, it's not going to win the acceleration side of the race, but it will stop in no distance at all. In 2018, it set a new stall record at Valdez in Alaska with a takeoff of 11 feet. <laughs> and it, it can land in just over 11 feet, which is obviously less than its length. So I think for a, a stall competition that would that, that might just sneak in get you stopped and turned around before the other person is even even you know fully on the brakes um, what, what is it, it, it cruiser it, it, well this is the great bit um yeah it's got a continental c85 with 120 horsepower and for that mm. 120 horsepower you get 43 knots <laughs> you'll, be still, you'll still be going down the runway when they Shot ahead and landed on, on the way back. <laughs> when, the, when the spectators have left. <laughs> Even better is the stall speed of um, 17 knots. Yeah. Mm. And that, that, is a, that is an awesome aeroplane. And it, it's mm. worth it. If you Google for uh, the Valdez uh, stall competition, uh, you can find videos of, of this aeroplane being flown. And it is completely mad. Mm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, finally, finally, because I've been out all day, I didn't get around to choosing until I got back, and it was all a bit of a rush. So oh, I wasn't quite sure what to go for. And in the end, I went for something that's wacky um, and weird and unique, and it's called the Double Ender. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. That that is that is amazing. That's two Rotax turbocharged engines, so uh, upgraded to 130 horsepower, so 260 horsepower, um, and amazing. Helicopter like visibility, tiny fuselage. You can go water skiing on it, as you can see. Um, unfortunately, it's only got like one one set of controls, which is not not great. Um, so I think I guess just like Mark's extra 330 SC, I'm not going to get to fly that airplane either, unfortunately. Um, but uh, there you go. That would well, be that. And apart from the fact it's in my fantasy hangar, in which case I will. Right. That I mean, that is an ex an exceedingly awesome airplane. I and I completely forgotten about it. Um, and it's uh, it's developed by a guy called Alec Alec uh, Alec Wild, um, and it was built in Oregon. And it's been really 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 highly refined. Believe it or not, it started as a, a very very modified Piper of some description, um, but just gone way beyond that. And they spent a huge amount of time and effort molding that that nose cone, um, which is completely optically flawless, 
interestingly, he's following this now. He's doing a the, the double ender, but he's doing it side by side. So there will be a proper uh, two seat one where you sit side by side with the pilot. And, yeah. and it's all about all about this kind of it, this twin reliability, um, but just with this epic visibility. And again, there's a video online um, shot from this aeroplane taking off on top of a glacier in Alaska. And it, I think it dives off the glacier, and all you can see out the windscreen is just ice. It's, um, it's amazing. I'll, 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 I'll see if I can find the links to those and put those in the comments because they're worth Jolly good. Watch. Jolly good. So, mm. what have we talking of the comments? What have, what, what submissions have we got from the readers then for their? Wow, well, what have we got? Uh, well, I noticed when you initially mentioned the stall thing, uh, the Lysander came up, which was a good stall airplane, albeit it was always trying to kill you. Um, judging by what people say about that. Um, uh, so we have had suggested um, Andrew Kennedy says Dave's NX Cub is still the ugliest Cub in all existence. Absolutely. Um, uh, Andrew Kennedy also says Ed wins. Mark Greenfield said Ed wins. Thank you, well, Mark. Um, like. Ed wins even if he does like a nose wheel on a Cub. Sorry, uh -huh. Claire. Um, Aviator Steve said, "Maul would cream it." Well, uh, Maul is a good stall aeroplane. But... Yes. Uh, yeah. But not very many other suggestions. Um, oh, Claire B says, "Ian edges it just over Draco," and I have to say, I, Draco is very cool. But I have to say, I think that that um, on the basis of things sat in the hangar that you your hangar guests walk in and go, "Oh my goodness, what is that?" The double ender would be amazing. Plus, if if you had Draco in the hangar, people would just walk in and go, "What happened to that crash?" Because it you did roll it in the ball. <laughs> Ed is the commentary <laughs> that he <can> judges. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> that, is, that is very true. So I think uh, I think we might take that as a draw. Well, we can't take it as a draw because clearly Dave's nose wheel cub didn't come anywhere close to winning. <laughs> Johnny's little cub is ridiculous. So I think we'll go between Draco and double ender. That yeah, one. and I think that the, the double ender is is super unique. That is a, a very good, well remembered on that one. Okay, we're getting we're getting close to time. Let's just ask Mark while he's there if he's got any ideas. Mark, oh, we can't. Put me on the hot. Any ideas yeah. for stolen airplane? Stolen airplane. Now I guess you've, you've you must have flown a Yak twelve, right? Yes, I have. I didn't point. take they didn't take off as a big selling line, so only ah. bought them to the UK. They are very short field, carry four people. They take off slower than a Piper Cub, cruise faster than a Piper Cub, and um, yeah, you can have a lot of fun in them. Only burn 10 times more fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. it'll be up to uh, 50 litres an hour and that. That's it. But would it be your favourite stall aeroplane? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Any aeroplane is my favourite aeroplane, really, because they will fly. If it's got wings, I'll fly it. Just, you can't sit on the fence in here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take away your extra and give you a Cessna 152 Aerobat. And you go, any aeroplane is my favourite aeroplane? No, no, no. no. <laughs> favourite aeroplane to fly occasionally. That would be. Fair I enough. beat the Fair competition enough. in the early days in my young man. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Anyway, yeah. thought I'd just bring you back for that. So back, back to the green room. Thank you very much. There you go. Right, we are running out of time. In fact, we're over time. So what else have we got to get through? Dave, with your with your very distinct shadow on the wall there. Yeah. <laughs> the, sun's, the sun's come round and I'm... Would that be lighting being, by the sun by any chance? I'm being yeah. blasted at the moment. By, anyway, like so uh, w events. Great. So Three this weekend, um, at Brighton, they were going to have a vintage aerobatics competition, flying and hangar bash, which sounds like a great event. But unfortunately, due to COVID, they weren't sure they could go ahead with that so they settled instead for at home day a nice quiet at home day so that's on at brayton on saturday shuttleworth on saturday la flying for fun events um also on saturday laa devon strut at branscombe if you're thinking of going you must must ppr and get a briefing so if you uh, there's a link on the flyer website for that over the weekend there's piston and props flying at slate um that you probably know more about that than I do, Johnny, but uh, sounds like a great event. Um, mm. so Saturday, 
It's a virtual air tattoo, the Royal International Air Tattoo. Obviously, it has been cancelled for this year. But they're going ahead with a virtual event uh, for six hours of new videos of military aircraft and displays from around the world. Um, it's going to be on a very sunny, hot day. So good luck with that one. Mm. Also, now, just also uh, in events wise, not an event you can go to, you can fly into, but the British Grand Prix is at Silverstone um, and a bit of TFRs around that bit of North Lancashire because of all the helicopters and other aircraft flying into places like uh, to Western. So um, here it is, surface to uh, 2,000 feet, 2,500 feet, and you can see to Western in there as well. Same thing applies. So, yeah, don't get caught out by trying to over, overfly to West, uh, overfly Silverstone. That's it on the events. I'm I'm just going to chuck in. Yeah, so Branson's full, but Mark from the green room is is sending us. <laughs> oh, oh no, he's taking it down. It's the Look. little Branson Air Show, 29th of August. <laughs> That's the official poster. That's it. The official poster. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Yeah. <laughs> We've got more details of that on the website. So if you go to the yeah. website, you can look up the 29th of August, and there it is. Yeah. Mark, have they and, go um, to the aerobatic pilots of the Little Grandstand Air Show? He's, he's on mute. Oh, yeah. right. I'm back. On, I'm live. Yes, there are one or two good aerobatic pilots at Little Grandstand. We have got Lancaster, two Spitfires, two Mustangs, Hurricane, Yale, Global Stars, most importantly, and Little and Large Display, and a lot of other aircraft. There's about 31 aeroplanes on the show at the moment. Excellent. Wow. 29th of August. Send us some more information and we'll spread the word. And if also, people... airdisplays.com. Air displays. If you need one. <laughs> That's, for, your, yeah. for your gender reveal. <laughs> yeah. i'm not going to go there thank you very much <laughs> right um have we got time for qsy or are we going to push that to next week it's uh we, well, we've got the club first oh go for a club <laughs> quick, quick yeah just just a quick one um over 50 of you have ppr now for the flying on the 31st so thank you very much that's great um nigel webb is going to be doing another ifr webinar soon we'll get the date to you on that and the uprt day with greeners who's in the comments uh, is on the sunday the 8th of august and i know there's over half a dozen of you signed up for that already which is great stuff so thank you yeah absolutely good well in that case and i suggest that as it's already uh 2037 we should probably and the weather's stunning outside it's time mm -hmm. to retire to the gardens for a cold beer or cold something or other um, and so uh, that just leaves me to thank um, Four Flight for sponsoring the live stream and Sentry, the double channel ADSB receiver with carbon monoxide detector and standby AHARS. It leaves me to thank again Ed, Johnny, and Dave for picking up the slack as I wasn't around today. I need to thank Mark Jeffries for being our aerobatic guest today. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next week when we'll have maybe a bumper edition of QSY. Who knows? Thank you very much. And have a, I, I'll get this, but I need to get this bit a little bit slicker. Have a great weekend and fly safe. Bye. Fly safe. Enjoy the weather.